Hi, I'm Josh Allen from PSC Motorsports. Today we're going to be putting the steering gear on this Jeep. This gear goes on from 2008 to 2018. The Big Bore kit includes a new PSC Big Bore box, new PSC high flow pump, pump bracket, reservoir, new serpentine belt, SRVT valve, cooler lines and cooler mounting bracket, and four quarts of fluid. If replacing your stock gear with PSC Big Bore steering, you will have to upgrade your pump with our pump kit and cooler. To replace the pump, we remove the engine cover and the air box to get access to the front of the serpentine belt system. Then you want to disconnect your mass airflow sensor. And you also want to pull off this vacuum line and you just pull out the whole air box. Break the high pressure line loose and then let the system drain. We're going to take off this reservoir off the motor or off the front of the car. And now your reservoir is free. And I will typically cut the return hose to the reservoir. So now we'll do the three 13 millimeters that hold on the pump bracket. And you can pull the whole pump reservoir out as a whole after you undo the second Christmas tree. All right, so we'll pop out this little push pin right here. And that's what retains your overflow. And we're gonna pull the overflow up, twist it, and just kinda set it up out of the way for now. All right, so our next step is to undo the high pressure and the low pressure lines off top of the gearbox. Remove two 10 millimeter bolts holding the high pressure line from the frame. We can pull the factory high pressure hose out. We need to pop out the six retainers on top of the grill. There's three on each side. Pop the blinker out, and I just like to rotate these down enough so you can pop them out and just let them hang. We're going to drop down the sway bar to cut out the factory return line for the reservoir. So typically I like to cut them in two places. I'll cut them right here, right at the gearbox, and then I'll cut it right here on the reservoir side so that I can drop them out nice and easy. Before you ever pull off the steering column from the input shot of the gearbox, you always want to secure your steering wheel so the steering wheel won't rotate and you won't break any clock springs. Now we're going to pull the bolt off the input shaft so that we can slide the input off the gearbox. So now we're going to pull this cotter pin out so that we can undo this drag link. We are about ready to pull out the four bolts that hold the gearbox in. But to do that, this bolt is behind the coil spring. So my trick is I like to put a ratchet strap on that and then go over here to the cross member and pull it. And we're just trying to click it enough that you can get a socket on it. So that's all you're trying to do. gearbox is free. And now you got your gearbox out. Now we're going to put the pitman arm on the gearbox outside the vehicle because you typically can't do it because your track bar. So we're going to slide the pitman arm on, make sure it's clocked in the right direction 
pitman arm coming out to the front of the box. Put your lock washer on there. Put your nut. Grab your 46 millimeter. Now we're going to torque the pitman arm down to 225. Loosen the plastic caps on top of the box. And if you're doing cylinder assist, loosen the caps on the cylinder side. Now we'll open up our bolt kit for our gearbox. And the kit will tell you which two bolts to replace. So we're going to take out these two bolts right here, throw them away. You take your washer and your lock washer, put them on there, and these two bolts will go to the front of the frame. It's nice to have a strong friend because that gearbox weighs 55 pounds and it tends to get heavy when you're hanging it over your head. When you install your gearbox, you want to make sure the red line on the gearbox is matched up to the red line on the sector shaft. Now we're going to reinstall our input shaft. So we're just it should just slip right on there and then we'll get our bolt started. All right, so we're ready to put the pump on. You have your pump, you have your bracket. It's just like the factory one. The two holes go up top. Your dash tin goes up top. Put it on the back side of the pump. Line it up. Take the bolts. And they just go in there. So I always like to put this front corner bolt in first so I can drop it down in and get it started. So now we're going to put the reservoir bracket on the bottom of the reservoir before we put in the Jeep. So it's your two little bolts, grade eight. Now we're ready to install the reservoir. We're removing the stock reservoir bracket. Now we're going to remove the front bolt on the corner of the airbox bracket. We're going to drop our little spacer in there. So now we're going to trim the corner of this little tab. We're going to try to make sure there's no sharp edges. We have no sharp edges there. We can install a reservoir. The first thing we do, I pull off the 12 fitting off the hose so I can go ahead and install that into the reservoir. You want to put your hydraulic Loctite on there. And put some more Loctite on the outside of that fitting. And we just want to start this one for now. And now we want to start the pump. We got both started. You can go ahead and crank them down. So you'll take your little O-rings that came on your gearbox and you're gonna put those on both ends of your high pressure hose because when you pull it out of the bag, it has no O-rings on it. Now you're ready to install your high pressure line into your Jeep. Start with the pressure line in the gearbox first. Then the pump. and then secure it with the included zip ties in the kit. We're going to install our dragling. Now we're going to be putting the fittings in the cooler. So when you put your fittings in the cooler, your dash eight going into the cooler on the bottom side of the cooler and your fitting dash eight fitting coming out of the cooler on the top of the cooler. Now you're going to grab your quarter allen and you're going to install the plugs. 
Now we're going to flip the cooler over. We're going to take our cooler bracket pieces, slide these guys in with the cooler facing downward, and we're going to go for the last hole. So you're going to slide them in until they line up. Grab your little Allen bolt, finger start it. All right, guys, you got your cooler together. Now let's go install it in the Jeep. Charlie's going to hold it up while I get the bolt started, or the first self-tapper started. We removed the cap now. Now we're going to drop our fitting in. And snug her down nice and tight. We're going to put the low pressure side from the gearbox to the cooler in. So first step, we're going to pop this one loose right here. And we're going to pop this one loose so that we can feed our hose through. Now we're going to go ahead and start the return line on top of the gearbox. And these dash eights will be seven eighths lines. And there again, you want to keep your hand on the line so when you tighten it up, the line does not rotate. You got your low pressure on from your gearbox to your cooler. So now let's get the cooler to the reservoir side done. All right, so now we're going to put the fitting into our reservoir. So you run it down mostly by hand. Then you're going to take your seven eighths and tighten it up the rest of the way. All right, so now we're going to feed our reservoir hose through. Right where the wiring harness pokes through is where you're going to want to feed your reservoir hose through. After applying thread sealant, tighten up the lines to the cooler and the reservoir. Snug it up nice and tight. So now we got to remove the alternator and the alternator bracket to swap the belt. So you have three 13 millimeters and three 15s. Now you undo your last 13 millimeter and your 16 right here, and you pull out the little bracket that holds your alternator, set her off to the side, and now you can remove your serpentine belt. Now let's put our serpentine belts on. So I usually start out with the bottom crank pulley, and then go around your AC compressor, and then you pull it up here, feed it in between the idler and the tensioner pulley. And you get it over to the power steering pulley, but you don't want to put it on yet. Kind of just have it sitting there. Make sure all your belts look right, and we can go into reassembly of the alternator. Start out with your 13 down here, then your 16. Now, let's reinstall your alternator. But as you reinstall the alternator, you want to pull up and get the belt onto the alternator pulley. And now you can put your last two 13s in. So now, take your ratchet, make sure all the bolts are tight, but not too tight, because you're going into aluminum boss. And install the belt. So now we're going to install the SRVT kit. So it goes on top of the reservoir cap. So it's a 12 millimeter. We put it on there, tighten it up. This is your hose to your SRVT. 
push lock, you just slide it in, and then you push lock the SRVT on it. And now we're going to go to the Jeep and install it. All right, so first step, your hood prop rod needs to go over there. Then you're going to install your cap on your reservoir. Then you lift up this piece of plastic, and that's where the SRVT hose is gonna go. And now we're going to slide our little clip into its home and install our SRVT. So now we got the SRVT in, let's put our grill in. We're gonna put our Oprafil bottle back onto the Jeep. Put our air box back in. We finally got everything together, so now we're gonna fill her up with fluid and start bleeding and drive her away. So we just finished up the JK kit. We're gonna go test drive it and on to the next one. For information on this kit or any of our components, head to pscmotorsports.com.